this would be what is called a YouTube video. I'm smart now. It's fine. Hey guys, what's up? How you doing? How you hanging? I hope you're doing amazing. If you're not, I hope you take it spoiler. Let your hugs because you know. But uh, you can actually see that my channel's there. Why am I whispering? Hey, what's up, you guys? Welcome back to my channel. If you're new here, hi, I'm Lydia. I make mental health YouTube videos here on YouTube. Welcome to whatever the hell this community is. Hi, welcome. This story is one that honestly I had forgotten about. <laughs> Come on, sneeze. Are you coming, please? No? Okay. I had completely forgotten about this story until my mother reminded me of it. So thank you, mom, for giving me a video idea. Sure, that was your intention. Those of you who don't know, when I was younger, I had a kind of major psychotic episode. I was hallucinating. I was having delusions. I was paranoid. I wasn't in a good frame of mind. And I'm going to take you back. This story happened before I was diagnosed with any mental health condition. So this takes you way back. This story is something that happened before I started talking about mental health online. Let me be very clear when I say this. When this happened, I had no idea it was happening. I thought it was real. In this video, I'm going to be talking about a psychotic episode that I went through at quite a young age. I wasn't like a child or anything, but I was still younger. I also want to put a disclaimer, this was not drug induced, this was pre-mental health diagnosis, and this is the story of how I got diagnosed as bipolar 1. So this is my first psychosis story. Back in the day, I had this delusion that I was possessed and demonic- let me- I think I need to first define what psychosis is. Define psychosis. Psychosis means severe mental disorder in which thought and emotions are so impaired that contact is lost with external reality. And Siri graced us with the definition of psychosis. This psychotic episode was by far the most severe my mental health has ever been at. In short, I thought I was possessed. Reality checking in here, I wasn't possessed. I went through all my old photos on my old Facebook and I found some pictures that are from when I thought I was possessed and these images played into the delusion. In short, I just couldn't take pictures of myself very well and I thought that that was because there was something inside of me controlling me. I was so convinced that I was possessed by some demonic being that I couldn't, I wasn't in control of anything, I couldn't take photos right and every time I tried to take photos of this inner demon that was possessing me, my phone would shake and I couldn't get a picture. The reality of the situation, I just couldn't take a picture. But the thing is, I was so convinced of it. I was 100% set on the path that shit, I've been possessed, how did this happen? And I literally remember, I remember doing this. I remember Googling as a kid how to tell if I'm possessed and I was, I found a lot of like the um, a, a community online that also believed it was possessed and it played even further into this and I got so worked up and so wound up until it hit the breaking point where I was starting to see, this is why I still have the thing with the shadows, but I saw figures coming out of the dark towards me and I was convinced they were these evil demons trying to get me and take me with them. I was afraid of everything. I didn't go out the house. I was so afraid to do anything. I was convinced people were out to get me and they were going to get me because there was this inner demon who had claimed me who was going to take me with them. And I should point out at this point that I had never watched a horror film at all. And now I love horror films. Like I love watching horrors. This story was so like, it was so intense because I acted like I had been possessed because that's what my head was telling me to do and I was like, oh, I'm possessed. What am I doing? And I didn't feel in control of anything. I felt like this being had control of me and everything I was doing was because of what was going on. And I did some pretty bad things. I did a lot of things that I'm not happy to admit that I did. I have lived with that guilt for a long time and I don't even know if I want to talk about it because my mom still hasn't fully forgiven me for it. I haven't forgiven me for it and I did a lot of horrible things but I said a lot of horrible things and to be very honest I can't recall a lot of the things that I said. I just can't and it was <laughs> it was very hard to deal with, it was hard to get help for and eventually it <laughs> I can remember parts of this and a lot of what I'm remembering is both what my mom's told me and what I can vaguely remember. In that time period my mind was my mind is still really scrambled around that time period. I can't fully piece it together what happened in them for a few years and you've got to bear in mind that I had no friends so I had no friends around me telling me that this was delusional or that I was being crazy. I had no one around me telling me that what I was thinking was wrong because I was too afraid to tell anyone what was going on because I, I was like they're gonna experiment on I mean, they're gonna think I'm crazy, they're gonna think I'm crazy. Like when I went into school, I couldn't just turn around and be like, hey, I'm possessed. 
past. I couldn't just walk in and say that because I was convinced that they would then somehow contact these other demonic beings and they would then take me there because they'd know where I was. And it got to such a point where when I did go into school, I would either walk to avoid these demonic things that would have been on the bus because you know buses are terrifying. I have to laugh at myself now but at the time it was I was fearful and at the time I was also getting bullied. I was bullied severely throughout my entire time at school and that played into it a lot as well. I was very alone so I never like someone would be like oh you need to get some friends. I'd be like okay and I never would and I just I never had friends at school ever. What is that light doing? <laughs> I want to point out that at the time when this was all going on, I was both paranoid, I was clearly psychotic, and I was seeing things, I was hearing voices, I had all this stuff going on. And the worst point of this was when tactile hallucinations came in, which was at the point where I went into a GP appointment, I just broke down, help me, I'm possessed, or something along them lines. And I was hospitalised briefly. It wasn't a long admission, it wasn't on a section or anything, this was a very brief admission, which is where I got the diagnosis of bipolar 1. That was the first mental health diagnosis I had. So then we have the aftermath. And I have notes that I wrote down. I wrote down a lot of like, I, ha I don't have it here, my mom, I've got this notebook where I wrote down everything that was getting told to me from these voices and everything I had to do before I died, everything I had to do before I got taken. And I even wrote a note in the front of that book saying, sorry mom, they possessed me, they got me, I love you. And those of you who don't know, I had a lot of issues with my mom growing up and to get me to a point that I'm that vulnerable and writing that to my mom, it's a lot. Yeah, I thought I was possessed. <laughs> the reason I'm telling this story is because I want you to know that psychosis is real and it's hard to get help for when you're going through it. It's so hard to go through. It's very hard to deal with. It's hard to, it's hard to reach out for it because you believe that it, I don't even know how to phrase this, but for me I was so afraid they was all working against me, which is why I'm very capable now of recognising when people are experienced and things like that, but I, I can tell when someone's being delusional. Delusions are very common. I'd say it's a pretty regular thing for someone to have like an irrational thought here, there, everywhere. Delusions are more than just irrational thoughts. Delusions are what I would like to say is the next level of irrational thought, as, as in then believing and pursuing the irrational thought. And for me that turned into psychosis, which is a very real thing. And if you would like me to talk more about hallucinations, tactile stuff, and all of that lovely fun subject of psychosis, and if you want me to talk a bit more about the bipolar diagnosis, I'm very happy to, because I'm no longer diagnosed as bipolar. I got changed when I was diagnosed with dissociative disorders, which I'm diagnosed with depersonalisation and derealisation, and when them two came in, the bipolar 1 diagnosis, it was like, we don't believe you are, you meet the criteria for this. That's no longer there. Then it was BPD. My diagnosis has changed a lot. If you want me to do more about my entire diagnosis story, that's going to be a long video. I don't know, I just wanted to tell this story because psychosis is real and it can affect anyone, any age. Age, mental illness doesn't discriminate. Age is irrelevant. And while yes, some mental health conditions are more common in a certain age group, it's not necessarily that they're the only people who can be affected. Like children can be affected by mental illness. Children can have schizophrenia, even though it's more common in people 24 plus. Mental illness doesn't discriminate. Age doesn't matter. It can affect anyone. It's time that people stop saying that you have to be a certain age to struggle with things. I get it all the time with the PTSD one especially because I talk so openly about it I get a lot of comments saying oh you're too young to have this or there's no way you can struggle like that you're only 21 like you can't been through all of this to have this. Only people who have been through more than that can have it and it's I'll make a whole video talking about that because they're, the they're the one kind of comments that annoy the fuck out of me and um, that's definitely a video I need to make at some point. Uh, this has been a video, it's another story time. Um, if you're new here hit the subscribe button and I talk openly about my mental health struggles and mental health conditions and we also talk about other subjects, do Q&A's, live streams, vlogs, you name it, it's, it's probably on here. Make sure you give me a like, leave a comment if any video requests or questions you have because I'm planning on doing a Q&A at some point. Also if you don't know I have a book, I need to drop my champagne glass. Uh, I wrote this book this year and edition two is going to be released at the end of this year. This is edition one, I was talking about it in my live stream yesterday, uh, I do live streams every single Monday. This book is my baby, uh, I'll leave a link in the description as always if you would like to donate to me my paypal me link is in the description down below i'm not asking you for money however people ask if hey can i send you some money can i donate to you in any way can i help you in any way every little help at this point i'm a broke ass student you know <laughs> i'm not asking for you money that you don't have to send me anything paypal.me link is in the description down below and i will see you guys tomorrow with a new video because i'm doing videos every single day this month because why not and then it may push you into videos every day for 
eternity. Well, my eternity. As I become an auto, I need to shut up. Just stop. I need to quit and I'm gonna actually shut up and go because I've done like a 10 minute outro. I'm Tana Mojo now. Yes, where's my scandal at? Can I have a scandal? And I don't want a scandal. I could not deal with that drama. Thank you. Bye. Until you find your way back home